So in design are similar to the president's flag afloat, but are made of silk with heavy silk embroidery and embroidered with gold and silver fringe with red, white, and blue cord and tassels and a gold eagle on the pike. The colors are displayed when the president is in the presence of troops as commander in chief. So the first part of this is saying that when the president is inside or the, dis the flag is displayed inside a building or an office, they embellish it. They embellish it with tassels of sometimes silver and gold and red. They put an eagle on the top. Um, they put fringe around it and it's made of a heavy silk and it's embroidered. Okay, the flags they fly outside on the pole are different because they're uh, out in the weather and the elements. So they're not going to put a, an expensive embellished gold fringe flag outside on the um, flagpole. They keep those inside. So it has not really gold fringe and, and embellishment doesn't really necessarily have a lot to do with um, being a military flag as much as it has to do with being on the inside of a building. So therefore, it says the colors are displayed. The colors are the flag, red, white, and blue. The colors are displayed when the president is in the presence of troops as commander in chief. So anytime the president is talking to the troops, he's in front of the flag or the flag is next to him or somewhere in the presence of him when he's speaking as commander in chief. So um, it doesn't matter if the flag has gold fringe or tassels or anything like that. Anytime he's speaking in front of the flag or in the presence of the flag, it says the president is um, speaking to the troops as commander in chief. Okay, now I know this is um, Abbott. He's the governor of Texas. And I've talked a lot about this, the military inside of Texas, which all the military lands together or all the federal lands together create state of Texas. So here is the United States flag and the governor is like, the federal government's arm in Texas to uh, govern the state of Texas. Okay, so um, this flag, he's speaking in front of this flag here because he's also speaking as um, the military commander in Texas. Now, how do we know that? Because Military takes commands. So when there's a mandate, a dictate, an edict, a law, a rule, a regulation, that's for the military because the military are not sovereign entities. One sovereign cannot um, dictate to another sovereign, okay? And what you create, you control. So if the people create the federal government, the federal government does not dictate commands to the people. The people dictate commands to the federal government and then the federal government dictates commands to the military. And that is the way it works. Gold fringe or not, the flag itself represents um, the military power. Okay, so here's the president and here back here we see that these are, looks like red and white tassels in front of this flag. And this flag probably has gold fringe but you can't see it. But again, it doesn't matter if it has fringe or not. It's the flag of the United States and the United States is the um, land and naval forces. And we see that in Article 2, um, Section 2, where it says, uh, the president shall be commander in chief of the army and navy of the United States and of the militia of the several states. Okay, so here they use United States. United States is not a short way of saying United States of America. United States is an entity within United States of America, and that entity is the seat of government and the lands purchased for, for military purposes, or that is actually forts, and forts is for defense with a C. Up here in Article uh, to section one, we see he's the president of the United States of America. <clears throat> okay.
Okay, so when he's speaking in front of the flag, he's speaking as the commander in chief of the land and naval forces of the United States. And here we see that is um, true because if we look at Title IV, and this is Office of the Law Revision Council, Office of the Law Revision Council, United States Code, uscode.house.gov, we go down to Title IV, Chapter 4, the flag. Okay, um, let's look at this one. Right here in Section 1. So it, we're at Title IV, United States Code 1, flag, stripes, and stars on flag and seal, seat of government in the states. Okay, now when it says states, it's talking about the dependent states it created. And I did a, a video on the independent states and the dependent states. It's unfortunately about an hour long, but it explains what this state is and the other state that created the federal government. <clears throat> Section one, the flag of the United States. Again, the United States are the federal areas inside the independent states. Okay, <clears throat> the flag we have is the flag of the United States inside the independent states. <clears throat> it says it right here in their own laws, and this is made a law. It has a positive law citation. Many of the things that we think are laws are not laws. Okay, here's the positive law citation. It's been made positive according to Title I, Chapter 3, Section 204. The flag is for the federal areas. It represents the federal areas inside the United States of America. Those federal areas are called United States, also called sea and lands purchased. Flag of protection, certain flags, usually yellow, used to designate hospitals. I put this in here because there's... Um, many different flags. There's many different types of flags. There's even a flag that this guy created, General John Charles Fremont, when he crossed the United States of America. He carried this flag. It was a flag he made on his own. And apparently uh, there were a lot of holes in it because he was shot at by the Indians. And he carried this flag as a peace flag. This is not an official flag. It's just a flag he created. If I were going to create a peace flag, it would probably be gold and purple. Purple because purples uh, don't, uh, no trespassing. The color meaning no trespassing. So mine would be purple and maybe gold with um, the words natural person or private citizen on it or just maybe no trespassing. So there is no official civil peacetime flag. In all my research, I've never found anything on that. But you can make one. Okay, but when you use these symbols, you need to know what these symbols actually mean. So here we have the symbol of the star. The star also represents the Pentagon. Because if you draw a line from each point to each point, you get a pentagon. So the Department of Defense has a pentagon. It also represents, this represents the Vitruvian man. It's like a man standing with a circle. Okay, and what it says about the stars is a military representation representing the goddess of war. So this star without anything inside of it, without the lines inside of it, is a representation of the goddess of war. The flag is the flag for the United States. The United States are the military areas and the seat of government inside each of the independent states. The United States is a dependent state. It depends on the independent state. It can't exist without it. All those things that it creates are dependent upon it because that which you create, you control. 
they do an inventory of all their lands. This is from a GSA manual published in 1962. It says inventory on jurisdictional status, means the authority they have on their lands of, jurisdiction means power and authority. The status, the legal situation of that, st that jurisdictional, the power and authority of federal areas within the states, federal lands within the states. This is where they're supposed to fly the flag so that we all know that that's a military area under military control and the military is controlled by the United States. It is not a sovereign, the military is not sovereign. The federal government has some sovereignty. Flags of protection, certain flags, usually yellow, used to designate hospitals. I think I read that. The flag of the United States, this is in one of their laws, one of their um, acts, shall be 13 horizontal stripes, alternate red and white, and the union of the flag shall be 48 stars, white and a, and a blue field. So the star is also the most widely used military symbol and is found on the tanks and fighter jets of all the superpowers, as well as in the armed forces and all other countries on uniforms, etc. It is in this particular use related to this symbol, the Pentagon. In this group and to the star, the sign for the planet Venus as the morning star and the goddess of war. For nearly all for nearly all armed forces on this planet, the golden five pointed star without crossing lines is the symbol par preference of military rank and power it is uh, for its origins and a description you can look up these two symbols okay I think this is Venus and you got to understand that that this symbol is with the man's head up the symbols also flipped upside down and I think what it means is like good man bad man so good man pointed up bad man pointed down So um, when we look at the flag, we're looking at a flag for the military, the military areas. Here we're going to look at where the United States, this is Woodbury, where the United States, that's the federal government, own land, situated, that's the cities, within the limits of particular states or over which they have no session of jurisdiction for objects either special or general, so they have either special powers or general powers over the lands they're given. So like parks and wildlife would be a special power and um, general power, like, or maybe this is backwards, special power, military power, or general like parks and wildlife or the same powers that a regular person would have when they purchase land. Little doubt exists that the rights and remedies in relation to it are usually the same as apply to other landholders within the states. You see that? With other landholders within the states. They are a tenant on our lands. The federal government is a tenant on our lands. They display the flag so that we can know that they're the military power on our land. Um, they work for us. Okay, they are our servants. I don't care what anybody says. We are their masters. Some people would rather you not think about that. But that is, that is the truth. And they have a flag so that we can know that they're there and that uh, other people can know that they're there. Okay, here's the actual law, public law, chapter 389, July 30th, 1947. It's 61 stat. 642 if you want to look that up flag and stripes additional stars so when it says they add a star when a state joins the union it's saying that it's it's adding one star for every new military dependent state joined into the union so you have independent independent states that cede land to the federal government which is the, the sovereign and then you have um, dependent states, which are the states that it creates, and the star is for that state that it created for military purposes, okay, because 
we already read that the star was for the military um, representation on the flag. So whenever we have a military, a state join the union and seeds, they seed lands to the federal government for military purposes, they add a star. But you think the star is because the state joined the union is now under the federal government, but that's not true. The state or the star is for the lands inside the, the, the independent state that they gave to the federal government for military purposes. Okay, so there you have um, all about the flag. Uh, throughout history, there were a lot of people who created their own flags and carried their own flags around. Um, I don't know if the federal government would want you to register your flag. I don't see why. I don't see that in the Constitution. They're supposed to be there to protect everything we do. But um, you can create a flag. Uh, it doesn't have to have 13 stripes. 13 stripes represent the original colonies. Okay, so if the stripes represent the original colonies, then they should add a stripe for every state added and then a star for every military state added, but they don't do that. They keep it 13 stripes and then a star for the military state created. Okay, so like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see y'all in the next video.